Hey guys, it's Peter Jordan with Wallace Dangler, and today what we're going to take a look at is the Garmin 1242 XSV. Now, you have all the same features on the 1242 and on the 1042. They're identical units. The difference is the size of the screen, but this time we're going to go through the 1242, mostly because it's easier to see. And in later videos, we'll do the Echo Map, and we'll also do the 76 series. But today, we're going to take a look at the 1242. Hang tight, and we'll go through it. Okay, so starting out, you can go through the home screen. The home screen, no matter where you're at, will take you to the home screen, kind of like on your cell phone. So let's say we're taking a look at our nav charts right here. I'm going to be able to select it here, and I want to go back to other menus. I'll just press the home screen. I like that a lot. Um, now notice it's not a touch screen, which, again, I'm also a big fan of. And there's two distinct advantages. One um, the processing speed on this unit is much faster. Two, it's considerably less expensive. And a third advantage is also that you're not uh, muckying up the screen. And if you're running and chop, you can actually operate this thing. Trying to use a touch screen to chop is really, really tough. So we're going to go through real quick. We're going to take a look. Now we can operate this thing by using the control knob here. It just goes as a roller. It doesn't flex up and down. But once we're there, we can also come through and operate from the directional keys. Okay. So that's how we're going to interact with the map. Let's take a look at that real quick. I'm going to select the navigation map. We're on the simulator, so it has us in Miami. I'm going to go up to where we're more familiar with. And notice I've zoomed out by using the roller button. And I'm going to come right on up, running diagonally over here, and we're going to head up to Mobile Bay. <clears throat> now, this is a really, really fast operating system. Notice once I zoom in, everything is there, so I'm not waiting. Um, on the 76 series, it's a great series. There's a lot of wonderful things they can do, but because the processor is trying to wait on you to use the touch screen, it's a little bit slower to catch up. So moving around, I'm going to navigate with this, zoom in and out of the screen with this. Okay. Now, let's say after I'm done scrolling around to look at the world, I want to go back to where my boat is. You just hit the back button, just like you do on your cell phone if you're a Samsung guy. I am. Now, from here. We can come through the menu, and on the menu, we have several options. We can go through all of our navigation chart menus, such as the waypoints, tracks, built-in maps, all that kind of stuff that you typically see on a Garmin, and also we have even a little bit more. From here, we can look at the preset of the uh, maps and go through there. So like, let's say we want to look at the declutter, it's going to take out a lot of the junk, so it makes it a lot easier to read. And notice we have a lot more depth contours on our nav map than we used to. So pretty cool stuff. All right, now going back. From here, all of your same display information that you normally expect from Garmin is listed to your right-hand side of the screen. I'm going to back to the home screen. Now, this one is set up so that we have the navigation map, the fishing charts, uh, your 3D chart, Fisheye 3D. These are two-hour movies. But you can also operate all of your radars from there, okay? Not all of them, excuse me. <clears throat> you can rate, you operate your radar overlay. Now, with this, you have your weather. Now, Garmin weather comes from a GXM 53 antenna. And we'll look at that later to kind of understand what all that offers. So, let's go through this unit first. All right, so now it is sonar capable, and we order it two ways. One of the ways we order it is in the box with a transducer. And for about 100 bucks more, we have another combo that gives you an in-hole transducer and a transamount transducer. Uh, we like this a considerably better. Uh, it's a more powerful transducer system, and it's less prone to any issues such as cavitation. A transom mount transducer can be prone to cavitation of the hull. In hull deucer never will be. All right, now I can also operate my radar. Okay, and we're going to use this later on to explain uh, how all of our different radar systems work. We're going to go through the Phantom radars later, but today just understand we can still operate it the same way. All right. Now, this gives me all of the same network capabilities that I have with the 76 series. So let's say I'm running a upper station boat, like a 246 Cayman Skydeck. I'd have this on my lower station, and I can put the 10 inch on my upper station. I only have one set of transducers. I can still run my radar through it, still run my VHF through it, still run all of my um, media systems through it. So it's a very, very versatile system that can save you a good bit of money. So. Now, one other cool thing I do like is the hotkeys. So let's say for us, 
the radar overlay is something we use a lot. If we're in a harbor or we fish at night a good bit, the radar overlay can be phenomenal. Well, I want to be able to access it any time. So I'm going to make it a hard key. So this is a short key, and it's automatically loaded to your favorites, but also if you're running the chop and you want to go from screen to screen to screen, we can do that. So right now we're at radar overlay. If I press 1, it'll take me to my other short key, which is the standard navigation map. Now we can change any of these at will. So let's say I'm going to come to my home screen, and I'm going to use the different charts. I'm going to select, and I really think that the fishing screen is the way I want to go. So number one right here is my um, fishing chart. Number two is precipitation for the weather. And three would be the radar overlay. Notice it's marked. So we're going to come back to here to the radar overlay. And we're going to make it number three. Save to short key three. Hit select for OK. And we're done. We're going to go back. And notice one, two, three. And from anywhere we're at, we can push that short key and it'll take us in there. Now, the cool thing about your fishing map is if you'll notice, it shows all the topography of the bottom. That's the big difference. Um, now, we'll go through the different features of what each map offers later on on different videos. But this one right here, this is the Garmin 1242 XSV. Um, it is my personal favorite Garmin unit. I think it's absolutely perfect for all of your hybrid bay model boats. Or if you're wanting like me, I don't want to mess with the screen. I've got kids, so they love to touch it. Or also, I cannot stand using a touch screen and chop. If you're like that, you want to have the option to have phenomenal sonar, operate every Garmin system you could want, and save a good bit of money, 1242 XSV could be the unit for you. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful to you. And we're going to do more in-depth Garmin videos as we go along, and we're going to feature different products that we sell here at Sunrise. And uh, from there, uh, we'll discuss what each of them's uh, advantages and disadvantages are, and then we'll eventually go through um, the basics of operating a Garmin. And what I love about Garmin is no matter which Garmin unit you pick, they all navigate the same way. So even if you have the least expensive Garmin or the most expensive Garmin, going from one unit to the other isn't like relearning uh, anything it's it's a beautifully simple system so we're going to go through it later i appreciate y'all watching and uh, we'll see you on the water